Good morning, world. This is Dr. Rico Short, the Root Canal, special to the stars, the Grace Life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this terrific, terrific, terrific Tuesday, man. I'm so excited to share this word with you, man. And this word is going to help some of you because I believe that somebody out there is in a war. I believe somebody out there is being challenged in their faith. I believe somebody's out there is being challenged in their health. And some people are challenging, being challenged in their minds. And we have to remember as believers, man, we are in a spiritual battle. All of us, I don't care if you're 13 or 93, man, we are all in a spiritual battle. So sometimes, have you ever got up this mo in the morning? He's like, man, I don't feel like doing anything. Well, guess what? That's the start of a spiritual battle because God don't create us like this. God says his grace and mercy is new every morning. God says every morning we should get up and celebrate. You know why? Because the Bible said God celebrates over us. The Bible said God sings over us. Man, how awesome is that? And if you embrace that and you allow that to really get in your spirit, man, you got to wake up different. You know, people say, well, Dr. Shaw, I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. There is no wrong side of the bed. There is no wrong side of the bed, man. You woke up this morning. Some people didn't wake up. Or some people woke up in the hospital. Some people woke up in ICU with tubes down their nose and IVs in their arm. And you woke up this morning, man. You can breathe. You can walk. You can think for yourself, man. That's a blessing. And don't take that for granted. We all, I know you're like, why are you screaming this morning? Too early to be screaming it's because I'm screaming because somebody needs to hear this. I need to shake this dust off your, off your spirit and off your mind, man. If you wake up and if you got health, man, you are blessed. But the enemy is going to make you think of something crazy. And it's going to have you worried. He's going to have you fear and doubt and unbelief. And see, when you're in fear and doubt and unbelief, beloved, guess what? You choke the blessings of God. I'm going to repeat that. When you are in fear, doubt, and unbelief, you choke the blessing of God and you don't get a chance to live your best life. Like little Duval say, I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you. Woo! I'm living my best life. Y'all don't want me to get going. But anyway, man, when you're in fear, doubt, and unbelief, man, you are not living your best life. You are choking out the blessings of God. Because, beloved, the blessings of God is always flowing to us. I'm going to repeat that. The blessing of God is always flowing to us, but we are in fear and doubt and unbelief. We don't get a chance to receive that. Reminds me, have anybody ever watered their lawn? Okay, what do you use? You use a hose pipe. Don't you know when the hose pipe get kinked? The water doesn't flow. It's not that you didn't pay your bill. It's not the fact that the water isn't coming out of the source. It's because it's kinked. And that's what happens we, when we are in fear, doubt, and unbelief. We get a kink in our spiritual lifeline. Woo, come on, Holy Spirit. A lot of you guys aren't getting what God has promised you because you have a kink in your spiritual lifeline. You have you're you in fear of something you in doubt and you're worried it reminds me of peter i love peter man because peter reminds me of all of us in certain points peter was the only one that was bold enough to get out the boat when he saw jesus jesus bid him to come he wanted to walk over and guess what peter did peter defied all the laws of buoyancy man this guy walked on water he didn't sink you know why it's because he was looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of his faith. But once he got in doubt, fear, and unbelief, the Bible says when the waves roll up, when the wind started to blow, guess what Peter started to do? Peter started to sink. And that's what happens, man. When we get in fear, doubt, and unbelief, we start sinking. Our spiritual lifeline gets a kink in it. And guess what? We don't get a chance to walk on water. In other words, we don't get a chance to experience the miraculous that God says that's ours. Are you getting something out of this? Because I know I am. Because there are some times when I'm in fear and doubt and unbelief. And I have to shake that junk off. I have to start repeating the promises over my life. Like, God, you said that I'm the head and not the tail. God, you said that I'm a lender, not a bar. God, you said that you're going to perfect everything that concerns me. God, you said that... 
that whatever I put my hand to is going to prosper. Lord, you said that I can sow in a time of famine and I can reap a harvest at the same time. I can re reap a hundred times that I've sown. That's what you said. But if you don't hear that and if you don't believe that, guess what's going to happen? You're going to settle for average. And God did not call any of us to be average. I'm going to repeat that. God did not call us, any of us, to be average. In fact, Jesus said when he left, he's going to send us the comforter. He's going to send us a guide. He's going to send us an advocate, the Holy Spirit, to dwell inside of us so that we could do greater things that Jesus has done. Jesus said that himself. It's in the red. <laughs> Jesus said, greater things that we shall do because I've gone to the Father. And that's what I want to encourage you, man. Greater things. I'm believing that you do something so big, you even surprise yourself. That you get a chance to live the Ephesians 3.20 life. God is going to do exceedingly, abundantly more than you could ever ask, think, or imagine. And that's in every area. Some of you guys out there that follow me around the world, you are dentists. Guess what? God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above more than you can ask or think in your dental profession. Whether you're a specialist like me, whether you are a dental assistant, whether you're running a dental program of some sort, an assistant school, a dental school, God has a plan for you and it's going to be awesome. But you can't access it if you are constantly in fear, doubt, and unbelief. And what gets you through that is spending time in the Word of God, spending time in prayer. And even in meditation, meditation is so important. I've, I've started back meditating in the morning because that gets me centered. That gets my focus off my problems and put my focus on the one who can solve all my problems. And that's my trust in God through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about religion, man. I'm talking about a relationship. See, religion will bind you. Religion will tell you you have to do this and that, this and that to get God's blessings. No, I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is that you establish a relationship with God and spending time with him, he will manifest himself to you. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what you look like. I don't care if you're black, white, male, female, anywhere in between. I don't care what you are or what religion, quote unquote, you call yourself being a part of. Once you get close to Jesus... And his finished work and his word, man, your life is going to change. It's going to change. I mean, there's no way you can stay the same and hang around Jesus and his word and his truth. You're going to see yourself feeling better mentally, spiritually, emotionally. You're going to see your marriage, man. I, I feel in the spirit that a lot of people, marriages are struggling right now. You, you, you're married, but you feel like you're roommates. You're married, but you're feeling like you're running parallel lives. One of you guys is going one way and the other one is going the other way. And God didn't call you to, do, to be that. God called you as a marriage to be as one, to be in sync with one another, to be able to uplift others, to be able to, to have the other person specialize in your weaknesses and vice versa. That's for somebody out there, man. I, I feel that somebody marriage is on the quote unquote rocks and you're just avoiding it. And you can't access the promises of God by avoiding painful situations. I'm going to repeat that. You can't access the promise of God by avoiding painful situations. And I'm all for praying for marriages and I'm all for counseling as well. But guess what? Man, some of us, we just got to be honest. We got to be honest with our spouse and tell them how we feel because they can't read our minds. I teach this class. Man, my wife taught this class called Re-Engage. And it's an awesome, awesome marriage class. And it's something that not only we were students, we taught it and then we became students again. And man, I want to be a student again because we all can learn on how to improve our marriages. Because your marriage is the closest thing you're going to get with a real life experience with God because the Bible talks about we are the bride of Christ and Christ is the broom, is the groom. He's not the broom, he's the groom. And so the more we get closer to Christ, the more we experience his goodness, his grace and mercy, that should reflect the same image in our marriages, point blank period. And a lot of marriages are failing right now because there's no communication. 
And that's the same way with our lives. Our spiritual life fails because there's no communication because prayer is simply communicating with God. That's what prayer is. Prayer isn't necessarily going down in your face and crying for 30 minutes or locking yourself up in a room and, and, and praying your, your guts out. And it's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're led to do, but prayer is simply communicating with God. Saying, God, I love you. God, I need you. God, I want you to be first place in my life and I want to reach my divine destination on earth. That's it. That's that's a prayer. And if that's, just, if that's too much, you can just say, God, help me. God, help me. So, um, so today, man, on this terrific Tuesday, I just want to encourage everybody that's in a war right now, a spiritual war. I'm talking about spiritual warfare. I want to let you know that God is on your side because once you got God on your side, man, you are the majority. You have legions of angels that are assisting you, that are assigned to you. That's going to give you your favor, your promotion and protection and increase. And that's one of my prayers. I pray almost every day. I say, God, thank you for sending my angels to the north, south, east and west and bringing my favor, my promotion, my protection and my increase in Jesus name. Those are four things that I pray for. And those are the four things I want to pray for you right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, those that can hear me and see me right now, Lord, give them favor. Lord, give them promotion. Lord, give them protection. Give them increase in Jesus name, Lord. But most of all, give them wisdom. Give them a heart for you, Lord. Let them not just chase the blessings. Let them chase the blesser because when we chase the blesser, we know who that is. That's you. And you can change us from the inside out. And when you give us wisdom and favor, we have every key that we need in life to unlock the doors of blessings, to get through breakthroughs, to get over anxiousness and anxiety, and to get past addictions, Lord. I thank you that everybody can hear me and see me right now, Lord, that they feel this right now, that you are with them right now, that you said you would never leave them or never forsake them, Lord. Lord, I pray that you give them angels right now in the spiritual warfare that they're facing on their job, in their marriages, in their wisdom to make the right decisions at the right things in Jesus' name. I love you and I love these people, your dear people around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Love y'all, man. Y'all have a terrific Tuesday. I'm praying for you. If you got something out of this, go and subscribe to my YouTube page and share this message, man. Also, big shout out to Target. Thank you for picking up my book, Getting to the Root of Your Problem. You can get that book. That's one of my first books. I wrote a few years ago, and it's a daily inspirational reading to help you in every area of your life. So big shout out to Target, or as y'all say, Target, Target, big shout out to Target. Um, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you allowing me to be able to sow seeds of encouragement into your life. Love y'all, man. Grace life. Peace.